Business Brain, The Entrepreneur's Show, episode 414 for Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to, welcome back to Business Brain, the show uh, by, for, and about entrepreneurs, where we talk about using our business brains in all aspects of our lives. Uh, and we're happy to have you back here. We're happy to be back here. I just got back from Las Vegas here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in California, I'm Shannon Jean in Lafayette, California, where it's so dark and stormy, it actually looks uh, <laughs> like it's nighttime at about one o'clock in the afternoon right now. I was going to ask yeah. if you were it, uh, impacted by the storm, the rains and all that stuff that are happening uh, out there. Only in a, on a um, small level in our area. I mean, we've had some trees go down, not on our property, but uh, certainly around us. That's significant. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's trees have dropped everywhere. Um, the and it's it's been amazing. From someone, I spend a lot of time on the water because I'm a I'm a duck hunter, and I spend yeah. in the winter I'm, I hunt two or three times a week, and watching the what was a drought in half of the Sacramento Valley not having any any water this year to seeing it just like an ocean yeah. uh, and water everywhere. It, it, over a period of a few weeks has just been incredible. And uh, I mean, we definitely need the water. It's great to see sure. it happen. It would be nice if it was spread out over a few months, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. Yeah, exactly. Um, Exactly. Well, I'm yeah. glad you're all right. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. We're good. we're good. We're up on the hill. We're okay. That's good. <laughs> we're yeah. Safe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Higher ground. We have a creek, but it's uh, down at the bottom of the hill, but it is, it is flowing. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, how was the Consumer Electronics Show? So I don't think it's called the Consumer Electronics Show what anymore. What do they call it? I think it's CES. It's CES? Yeah. Oh, I think they okay. changed it. It's like Kentucky Fried Chicken isn't Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's Got just it. KFC. You know, I, I, I don't, see. they didn't change what it stands for, but I, I think a few years ago they, they changed the branding. But of course it started life as, and still very much is the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, it had been 2020, uh, January was the last time I was there. And I went with uh, just recovering from something that my doctor had a week before described as a coronavirus. This is back in 20, oh. in 2019, end of 2019, ah. beginning of 2020. Cause it was this cold that I, I remember going to my doctor thinking I never go for a cold, but I was worried that I was getting pneumonia. And so I went before I went to Vegas and she explained that most colds are rhinoviruses and uh, this one that's going around. She doesn't know what it is, but she's like, it's probably a coronavirus and, and they tend to be a little more resilient. It wasn't until a few weeks later that, um, you know, uh, I heard on the news that same term and was like, uh, hey, wait a minute. But anyway, uh, it was the yeah. first time that I went since 2020. I did. I wound up not going last year. They held it technically last year. I think they held it because if they had canceled, they would have had to refund a lot of money that they didn't have to refund would have been my guess. I see. People said that it was it, it was a ghost town, uh, it, you know, um, it about a week before everyone started canceling last year. So, so I, I, there, there were no people for me to meet with or not enough to justify a week away. So uh, I yeah. did not go last year. So it'd been three years and I didn't know what to expect in terms of who was going to be there, how many vendors were going to be there, how many people attendees were going to be there. And it was, it was valuable. Um, I, it, so as not to bury lead, the lead, I'm glad I went it was less vendors than previously. Nor n normally, well, actually, I don't know. I it, it it I judge. I mean, for those for those of you who've never been to CES, uh, it it's usually massive, spread out across the Las Vegas Convention Center, as well as a number of hotels. Correct. Well, that, it's that, it's in two convention centers, so it's in the Las center. Vegas Convention Center and the Venetian slash Sands ah, Convention okay, Center. That's, yeah, yeah. I, so, and it's in. It, there's a new hall. There's, there's the West Hall of the uh, the Las Vegas Convention Center. Uh, so they use that now, but they don't use the South Hall, which I think is great. The South Hall was uh, – I got a lot of PTSD about being in the South Hall. It's just massive. and uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's it's much better layout now. Um, oh, good. I, I, I count – I don't know how many vendors are typically there because it's rare. I don't want to say rare. It, it is uncommon for me to be on the show floor. I go because I'm on media 
And I am interested in meeting with people that want to meet with the media. That rarely is the case on the show floor. People on the show floor want to meet with partners, vendors, distributors, yes. and media tends to, to fall to the bottom of the list. So I really go to CES, not for the show floor, but for three press events that happen in the evenings. One is held by uh, the CTA, which is the Consumer Technology Association or whatever it is, that puts on CES. That's called CES Unveiled. That happens two nights before the show floor opens. So this already okay. is interesting, right? So I have to get there super early. I flew yeah. out on January 2nd. Then I go to an event called Pepcom, which happens the night before the show floor opens. That's run by a private firm. I don't know what their arrangement is with CTA, but I'm sure there is one. And then the day the show floor opens that evening is an event called Showstoppers. They are all basically the same thing. They are three to four hour long events. They serve food and drinks just to make sure the press is happy and, and shows up. But they are for media only. And the vendors that are there, uh, you know, exhibitors that are there are not in the big overdone booths that you will find on the show floor. Those are cool, but they're inefficient, right? And so yeah, sure. at these events... Pay, press uh, vendors, exhibitors are at, you know, six foot long tables. Everybody has the same size, quote unquote, booth, very efficient to get around, super easy. It's just in one little, you know, conference room kind of thing, a big conference room, I suppose. But uh, but they, you know, super efficient. They, a friend of mine uh, refers to it as speed dating with the press, and that's a perfect way to describe it. So with that, I can tell you that. There were less vendors, but there were still more than enough to make it worth my while. Pepcom uh, in a peak year would be at about 210 vendors, perhaps. This year, I think it was just at about 150. So, okay, you know, smaller and, and yeah. by a significant number, but not, 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 certainly not half, you, you know, and certainly not, not right. less than half. So it, it was worth it. Attendee wise. Um, I think there were about a, they were predicting it was going to be about a hundred thousand attendees versus the normal 140 to 160,000. So uh, again, less, but it's but, still a crazy amount. Yeah. yeah. Which, which surprised me, man, because I, like we've had, not only have we had, you know, effectively three years off because of uh, pandemic lockdowns and all of that stuff, but we also are in a time where trade shows mean less, like unless you're, you're going to have, a, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. Having meaningful in-person conversations with people is hugely valuable. It, it really yes, is. It is. However, it's hard to justify the cost of going to one of these events for a, an exhibitor that has to do multiple booths and, you know, things all over the place. Uh, just on the, well, it's better to talk in person than on zoom. I mean, it is better, but it's, it's incrementally better. It's not game changing better. Right. And so, right. and then there's also websites where you can go and get all the details about products. And, and based on the knowledge of some of the PR people I ran into uh, at these events, you can often get better information from the websites than you'll get in person. <laughs> so of course it's like buying a car. Yeah, It's, it's like buying a car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was pleasantly surprised to come out of the week feeling like I got value out of it. And, and I, I could have gotten more value. I, it's tough at CES. You got to build your schedule. And anyway, I, you know, you, yeah, there's always I, I mistakes you make, but yeah. Yeah. And we've done a couple of shows about trade show. We've done a couple of episodes about yes. trade shows. Uh, one is uh, episode 258 and another one we did um, on conferences and trade shows, uh, episode two. Oh, eight. And we'll link those in the show notes. And I'd recommend you listen, go back and listen to those because we've both done a fair number of trade shows. I've exhibited at a bunch of them. Yeah. And, and I do really think there's value there. CES is a just a monster, but there's all kinds of other shows that are smaller in nature, less expensive, certainly to exhibit at, but, and, and less expensive to attend. And, but I think there's some real value. And I had, you know, there, these, Previous episodes we've done, we laid out some real tips to make it more productive for yourself uh, and your employees. If you send your employees, you know, we always used to send our guys and, but you have to give, you have to have a plan for yourself. And if you're sending your employees, you have to have a plan for them to make oh, yeah. it productive, whether they're working a booth, meetings, walking the floor. Um, if you're not exhibiting, I think, you know, walking the floor is not the most productive. Oh, no. Um, setting it, up. 
especially right. at CES, I, you know, oh, I, gosh. I allow myself to wander in exactly one place and it's, uh, the basement or the ground floor, I suppose of the Venetian slash Sands convention center. They call it Eureka park. And it is where all of the early stage startups go. So you don't get the PR people yeah. down there. You get, you know, small little booths, uh, all about the yeah. same size, you know, everybody's sort of treated equal. It's like Pepcom, but it's early stage startups. And, uh, generally speaking, you are talking to the CEO founder, uh, you know, head janitor, right. like the, the one that's person. Productive. Yeah. That's oh, it's productive. I, yeah. The only problem down there is that mm, probably 80% of those companies will have are already now defunct, right? Like they, they spent their budget on CES with the hopes of finding how to fund the next stage of their company. And if they didn't find that it's over. So there's a massive reality distortion field going on down there because every founder yeah. is convinced that their idea is going to change their lives and those of everyone else. And, and it's super exciting, but you have to know yes. like, well, but it, but it might not, you know, I don't tell yeah. them that. The but, other, well, yeah. the other section I like is they usually have like a, these smaller halls or pavilions with specific, it, they sometimes they break it down by country. They have a Taiwan, yeah. they have a China and they're a similar thing. All small booths. Uh, you, you, Sometimes you're really, you know, it's better to have an interpreter with you to go talk to some yes. of these people. Yes. But you can make some great connections if you need to source, uh, you know, things if you're in that industry. Um, and it's just those those are really productive. The big booths, when you go to these big shows, that's cool. I saw your video about the LG booth, which is great. You can see sure. all these crazy LCD oh. screens or OLED, whatever they are. Uh, I, that's great to kind of go check out just for the fun of it. Um, but uh, I think they're worthwhile. I think especially we, we did a bunch of regional ones. We did some ones when we were heavily pushing into the educational area, area that uh, teachers events and we would do booths so we could speak to teachers and technology coordinators at school districts. That was huge for us. Um, and it was, you know, maybe there was a couple thousand people there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but you got to talk to everybody. If you stood at your booth and, you know, had a way to draw people in, uh, which often means standing out in front in the aisle to stop everybody, um, you, you really could make some great connections. And, and I would argue that often you make one good connection, find one really good customer, and that the whole uh event can be worth worthwhile. Oh, that we, makes sense. Had it happen to us. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I, yeah, it, it, it's easy to make it worthwhile. Your point about going in with a plan at a smaller show, you might be able to still make it valuable. If you, if you don't go in with a plan, I don't recommend it, but you, you might get away yeah. with that at a show like CES, where you literally have to plan logistically because you're not going to be able to go from any one vendors booth to yet any other vendors booth. Like you, you need to organize it, not just by uh conference center, but the hall or even the, the uh, section of the hall and the conference center. You've right. really, and, and this year I did a pretty good job with that planning ahead and compartmentalizing things. And then, you know, as I was on the plane, I, I built my, my path to sort of walk through and with surgical strikes, I was able to actually make the show floor, uh, valuable for me, which it usually is not. But, um, but I was able to, you know, some of the booths, it was like, Oh, yep. They don't want to talk to press. Okay. I'm out of here. And I would just cut bait and move on to the next one, but I had the next one. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And, uh, it, it is all about planning and it's also, um, reaching out to your partners whether or your clients because sometimes they're going to be exhibiting at the show yeah and uh you know we're, we're gonna our next episode we're gonna do on uh focusing on social capital and what it is and how to build it up over time but this is a great opportunity to reach out to those people maybe you've worked with or done something for in the past and see what especially larger companies hey are you guys put holding any events yes uh, can we meet up after the show or are you, do you have a suite somewhere uh, your company that you know we can go to and learn more about whatever get some one-on-one -on -one time definitely want to reach out to those suppliers and even clients that you've helped out and uh, connect with them it's really i think it, it's worth no it. that that's really the key is 
it, it's easy, especially, you know, I come from the, from the tech industry and as I know you do. And so it's, yep. it, we are, we as an industry are filled with uh, people who are shy, right? Right. And I, I certainly yes. count myself among them. I've learned how not to be shy, but my default is I, I will just, you know, I'm happy holding up by myself and, and that's all good, but that's not the way to make a show like this or a trip like this valuable. And so yeah. to your point, it takes for me very intentional effort. I, again, I've done it long enough that I'm comfortable with it now, but it, I have to, you know, put it on my calendar three weeks. Yeah, your before calendar the show. should be full. Right. Yes. <laughs> three weeks before the show or don't go. <laughs> I start and, and with CES, I really start about five weeks before the show. Cause you've got the, the winter holidays in the middle there. So as soon as Thanksgiving has ended and maybe sometimes even just a little before Thanksgiving, I'll start reaching out. Hey, are you doing a pavilion this year? I'd love to set up a time. Are you doing a party this year? I'd love to set up a time. And really by December 15th for a show that I left for on January 2nd, by December 15th, my calendar's full and it's double booked. I, I, yes. the way I go into CES is I plan to have to make Sophie's choice at every moment of every day, which event am I going to skip or which thing am I going to skip in this very moment? And that way, if something happens and an event's canceled or whatever, I've got other options sort of bailed out and, and it makes it so that my minutes on the ground are valuable. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. And, and, you know, lastly, but certainly not least that these shows can be fun and they oh, can get you thinking yeah. about things on a, in a, in a, with a different framework and looking at different industries. You know, we, we, Dave and I've always been in this tech space, like he says, but uh, going to shows and looking at how things are done and then trying to ad adapt them to your particular uh, business model can be very helpful as well. So uh, encourage it. Check out those other two uh, episodes, 258 and 208 and that business brain dot show. Yeah, and make sure send in your emails uh, to feedback at businessbrain.show. Things about your business that you want to share, questions you have, cool things you found. It doesn't matter what it is. Send it in to us. If we feature your email during an episode, guess what? You're entered to win a MacBook Air here in 2023. So, you know, we've... Uh, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. So... Thanks for listening, folks. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.